going on guys? Orms Forum coming at you guys today with another video. And uh, today's video I'm going to be talking about Jared Goff. Um, our Detroit Lions quarterback, our starting quarterback, by the way. You guys know all the backstory about Jared Goff. And um, about how we traded away Matthew Stafford here for 12 years at the time. And um, he didn't want to be part of a new, uh, um, of a build, of a rebuild, a retool, whatever we're calling this. And uh, he wanted a new destination. And uh, Brad Holmes and uh, Dan Campbell gave him that opportunity. And they traded um, him to the LA Rams for a couple, fr uh, um, a couple first round picks and um, a third round pick. And Stafford went on to LA and won a Super Bowl. Um, first, when that trade happened, first when that trade happened, I was livid. I, I didn't like the trade at all because I was trying to. Um, I was always the type. I was always the guy that was backing up Matthew Stafford here. Uh, I thought he was a good enough quarterback to win. I never thought he was an elite guy, but I always thought he was good enough to win here. And I just thought the Lions did him wrong, and they didn't do. They didn't build properly around him. Maybe a couple good teams. 2014 was one of the, probably the best teams they've ever had, especially on the defensive side of the ball. And um, but it just couldn't keep it together. No unity. Just couldn't couldn't keep anything together. Detroit's Detroit. They're cursed. Whatever you guys want to call it, call it. But first year out, Matthew Stafford wins the Super Bowl. That's not really what this video is about. But um, you guys know where I'm kind of getting at here. Um, but it's the Jared Goff debate. It's, it's kind of going on right now. I see it a lot on social media. We're talking about it a lot. We were just talking about it on um, LNU, Lions Nation Unite, with Mike or Mike and Herman Moore's um, app. Don't forget to subscribe to that app, by the way. Um, we were just talking about Jared Goff. And uh, we had our own little... We got our own little takes on it. Um, I had my take on it. Herman Moore had his take on it. You know, Dosa Dion, Micro Mike. We all kind of had our own little takes on, on Jared Goff and what we're kind of expecting of him. But um, Jared Goff obviously traded to the Detroit from L.A. It was probably a shock. I don't think anybody really knew that this was going to happen last year. We knew that Stafford was getting traded. We didn't really know. What teams, you know, we, we heard Carolina, we heard Washington, we heard San Fran might have been in the mix. You might have even heard New Orleans Saints was in the mix. Um, a few teams, like a, a, a good handful of teams were in the mix to acquire Matthew Stafford. And uh, Brad Holmes wanted a quarterback back in return. Um, and he made a deal with his former boss, Les Snead, who's the GM of the LA Rams. And uh, they ended up acquiring... Jared Goff in the Matthew Stafford trade. Now, like I said, I wasn't very... At first, when this trade went down, I was not happy about it. I didn't like it. I didn't like it last year. I was actually pretty livid about it, to tell you the truth. Um, I just wasn't a big fan of Jared Goff at the time. Um, he was kind of a declining quarterback at, you know, um, um, when we acquired him. Uh, there was some rumblings going on in L.A. that he wasn't getting along with his coach, Sean McVay, over some texts about his girlfriend, well, Sean McVay's girlfriend. And he just wasn't playing up to par, um, Jared Goff. You know, he had that, he came in the, came in the league in 2016, um, only started maybe about seven games as an L.A. Ram, and then um, didn't do much. Then in uh, 2017, 2018, had two Pro Bowl years, uh, made it to the Super Bowl in 2018. Um, Todd Gurley being a big part of that. But Jared Goff had fantastic numbers in 2017, especially in 2018. Now, after that, the numbers started going down, this and that. You know, he had the weapons, though. He had the line. The defense was kind of coming around. Aaron Donald was just coming into the mix, too, as well. He was there for a bit and just starting to become a force, um, Aaron Donald style. So, uh, the, the weapons were there, the coaching was there in L.A., but, you know, stuff going on with him and McVay. Bygones, bygones be bygones, see you later, bye-bye, Jared Goff. You got traded, and you got traded to the Detroit Lions. Now, that must have been tough for a guy who was playing on a pretty good football team the last few years, made the playoffs and everything, Pro Bowls, couple Pro Bowls under his name as well. Coming to a city that's just... You know, not known to win. We just don't win. 
You know, we had a good quarterback here for 12 years, like I said. Good quarterback here for 12 years and couldn't win nothing with him. A couple decent teams. One, I think, really good team, especially on defense 2014, like, uh, like I alluded to. And um, just couldn't do anything with that. So he comes here. Lack of weapons are here already, you know. We just Kenny Galladay gets shipped off to New York. Marvin Jones wants out. He goes to Jacksonville. Danny Amendola retires. So Jared Goff comes in. He's got Quintez Cephas and a TJ Hawkinson and, 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 and a running back in DeAndre Swift. Not a lot of great weapons there. Um, not a great defense whatsoever. Coming to one of the probably... One of the worst defenses ever um, um, in the last couple of years under Matt Patricia, this defensive guru. He gets fired, obviously, and then, you know, Brad Holmes, yada, yada, yada. But he, you know, his his morale must have been down, okay, for one. He comes here. And I'm going to try to play a little bit devil's advocate here, pros, cons. I'm going to be all over the board here. So just kind of bear with me if I'm rambling. That's it's what I do. Um... But he comes in here. We pick up Tyrell Williams. We pick up Rashad Perryman. Those two guys don't work. Rashad Perryman doesn't even make the team. Tyrell Williams gets hurt in the first game. I don't even think he made it to the third quarter of that San Francisco game. He gets a he gets a dirty hit from uh, Tart to safety that the, that puts him to sleep pretty much, and he doesn't even play the whole year. He's out for the year. Done. I think Tyrell Williams retired. To tell you the truth. Um, I don't think I even picked him up. I don't think he's even playing anymore. So I haven't heard anything. But anyways, um, no no real weapons. Um, has one of the probably the first 10 games of 2021 that you've ever seen that were terrible. Absolutely terrible. His first two games were not bad, though. First two games, he did throw for five touchdowns, couple picks, threw for some yards, uh, played San Francisco, played Green Bay on a night game. I think it was a Monday nighter or a Sunday nighter. I forget. But he did throw for five touchdowns in two games. I think a couple of picks. So that's not too bad. But then after that, everything went completely in the du- <laughs> in the dumpster. Everyone went, everything went completely in the dumpster. His next seven games, he threw for three touchdowns and four interceptions. Okay. Now, I'm not putting this all on Goff. You know, O-line going down. No weapons to really to really even look at, to, to tell you the truth. His best we- weapon was Quintez Cephas and TJ Hawkinson, who was starting to get banged up as well, too. And uh, that wasn't a good sign for him as well. So that was that was completely putting his season. He was he was probably he was probably thinking. Well, wow, what am I going to do here, man? What am I going to do here? This is a bad, bad scene. And this was the first 10 games, okay? And then after that, Dan Campbell had enough. Took took Anthony Lynn, who was our OC at the time, put him upstairs in the booth, demoted him, didn't fire him, demoted him, put him up in a booth, and um, Dan Campbell takes over the place. They promote Ben Johnson, who was a tight ends coach, to a passing attack coordinator. Then they picked up Josh Reynolds, who was a wide receiver um, for the Tennessee Titans, who who asked to be traded. They couldn't trade him. They ended up releasing him. And the Detroit Lions picked him up on waivers. Amon Ross, Ross St. Brown, the fourth-round rookie out of USC, started, started developing a little more. They started throwing him the ball more. Ben Johnson drawing up plays. Dan Campbell calling these plays. All of a sudden... Jared Goff turns into a really good quarterback the last five games of 2021 that, that he played. He missed a couple games in between there. He missed, uh, I think he missed against Cleveland, and he missed the game against Chicago. Pretty sure. I don't think I wrote that down either, but I think it was Cleveland and Chicago. Missed those two games. He, he played 14, 15 games, whatever he played. He missed a few games um, due to injury. But those last five games... 11 touchdowns, two picks, and he was completing 70, 70% plus of his passes. So he turned, he it, it was literally Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde for Jared Goff last year. It was insane. Like I like I I, I personally on on from where I'm sitting, 
and, I, and I, I'm 49 years old. I've seen a lot of football in my life. I've never seen a turnaround in one individual like Jared Goff did last year. Now, I'm not talking him up like, oh my God, he's this super elite quarterback, because he's not. Because there's, there's, about, there's two kinds of fans when it comes to basically liking someone or not liking someone. There's two. It's either you hate the kid, you hate, or you love. It's pretty much the same thing. Or you like, dislike. You don't want to use the word hate. And you don't want to use the word love. So sometimes that makes people feel uncomfortable. And I understand that. But there's two types. Me, I'm that third guy. I'm that third guy. At first I hated the pick. I hated the trade, sorry. I hated the trade. I thought it was an awful trade. Um, I just didn't like what they were doing. Because um, I, I was a Stafford guy. I was a, If you want to call me a Stafford fanboy, go ahead. I don't really care because I think I thought Stafford was good enough and he proved he was but it was a whole other story but there's there's I was kind of on the fence I at first I was first I hated it then I watched him and I just despised him I was like oh god I can't I can't wait till this guy's gone and then he kind of started getting my good graces again because he played better football at the end of the year. So it was like this. It was an absolute roller coaster ride for me. You know, hated him, loved him, hated him, loved him, disliked him, liked him. It was it, it was too much. But at the end, at the end I was like, okay, he did play good enough. Maybe they should give him another shot. Maybe they give him one more shot. So what the Lions did, uh, they did a lot of things to help Jared Goff. And people have to realize, and a lot of people didn't think it was going to happen. Um, me kind of being one of them, I thought they were going to grab a quarterback in the draft. Um, not necessarily starting year one, but I did th think they were going to grab somebody. They obviously didn't like nobody, and that's fine. They didn't pick up nobody in free agency. And they re-signed David Blau and Tim Boyle, which I thought was a little bit different too as well. I mean, I thought you could go pick someone up. They got a guy trying out named Connor Sampson. Um, I don't really know how that's going to work out, though, right now. But all that, it seems like Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell are all in on Jared Goff. They're all in on him, okay? We saw two versions of Jared Goff last year, like I said. A horrific, horrific version. And then we saw a really, really good version at the end of the year. Now, a lot of things went into that, like I said. Amon Ross St. Brown... Josh Reynolds coming over from Tennessee. Ben Johnson getting to, getting promoted to passing attack coordinator, drawing up plays. And Dan Campbell, believe it or not, calling the plays. I almost felt like Dan Campbell last year, when he came in and started, started calling the plays, I almost felt like he was coddling Jared Goff last year. Calling a ton of run plays, taking a ton of pressure, almost treating him like a rookie. If, if you want to be honest about it, almost treating him like a rookie, calling plays, calling running plays on second and long, third and longs, just kind of protecting him, not asking him to do much. And then as they went on, he was doing a little bit better. Ben Johnson was getting a little more acclimated with them. Uh, they obviously have a nice relationship, apparently. And uh, success happened at the end of the year. Now they had a three that had a three win season, so it wasn't successful, but Jared Goff played much better. Now what the Lions did in the offseason too, like I said, the draft, no quarterbacks, free agency, no quarterbacks. They re-signed Josh Reynolds. They promoted Ben Johnson again to offensive coordinator. So he got but he got a bump in pay twice. Um well deserved though because he he played he 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 coached well. He drew up good plays. Now, is this a make or break kind of year for Jared Goff? This is, you know, this is where the this is where the debate comes in. Lions fans have blinders. Lions fans have blinders. The haters and the lovers. You know, they the haters they only see the first half of the season. They only see the first ten to eight games. It's all they see. Boom. They don't see the last five games where it was awesome. And then the lovers, they don't see the first eight to ten games. They don't see that at all. They just talk about they just talk about well how good he was in the last five, six games. You can't do it like that, folks. You just can't. 
It's it's it, it's not good for the ticker. It's not good for the brain. You you have to you have to look at the whole big picture. And there's lots to look at with Jared Goff. He is a former Pro Bowler. He's been to a Super Bowl. Um, he's just some things happened in his in his football career that just didn't, really didn't go his way. And I'll, I'll tell you right now, there's no way in the world he wanted to get traded to Detroit. But he but he did take it like a man. He had a great attitude about it. Uh, you didn't hear anything about social media about him bitching and complaining. Um, it was just, you know, he, he, he did it the professional way. Now, he had one of his worst years, statistically. He had something like 19 touchdowns. But he had like, but he completed like 67.2% of his passes. Best ever. That was his best ever. I think the year before he completed 67. He got like a 64.1 or 64.2% career overall um, pass completion percentage. So he, he, he does complete the ball at a nice clip. He he actually really does. He's he, he is basically, he is a pretty accurate quarterback. He's not elite by any stretch, but he is pretty accurate. Um, and what this team did is they built around him. Like I said earlier, I'll say it for the third time. Didn't get nobody in free agency. Didn't get nobody in, uh, in the draft um, to push him. And they acquired weapons. They acquired DJ Chark, re-signed Josh Reynolds, like I said. And they, um, they drafted Jameson Williams out of Alabama, the speedster, the, the, uh, uh, the fast as hell speedster from Alabama, the wide receiver. Now, is it make or break for Jared Goff? I think in a way it really is. Um, but it, it's almost like, you know, people have been predicting that Jared Goff wasn't going to last this year. People are saying Jared Goff's not going to last next year. I think Jared Goff's here for sure, obviously this year. There's a good chance he's here next year because if they're bad... People, if, if they're bad, the Lions, and there's a chance they could be. There's a chance. There's always a chance with this team because this team's always bad. It's just it's very rare that we're ever good. And I hope we're good, though. There's a chance we could be bad. There's a chance that guys could get hurt. There's a chance that Goff just doesn't, doesn't mesh in 2022 somehow, even though he did at the end of the year in 2021. And then you're going to have to probably go out and get a quarterback. Now, you're probably not going to throw that quarterback. All depends on what your record is. I'm not here to predict the record. I'm just saying, if they're bad, there's a possibility they could go get a quarterback in 2023 draft. Then that guy's probably going to sit. All depends who it is, if it's Stroud or if it's, if it's Bryce Young. Who knows who it's going to be? They're going to have to be top two, top three to get those guys. That's my prediction. Who knows? But... You'll see Jared Goff here in 2023 as well. So get used to that. So people really have to get used to it. It's just, but this is where the debate gets hotter. If he's terrible, <laughs> if he's terrible, they might not be able to get rid of him. They probably, his out is 2023, money-wise, contract-wise. They, they actually save money by releasing him, trading him, Whatever they can do. Um, if they can trade him, even better. But he's probably going to have to, if, if you're going to want to get any type of capital for him, he's going to have to play good. Um, now me, personally, I'm hoping the kid goes off. I'm hoping he balls out. And, and, and if he balls out, extend him. I don't care if he gets, if he's winning us football games, if he's a reason, a, a reason. Not the sole reason, because... I still believe that the that the win losses on quarterbacks. I think it's the worst stat in football. I think it's probably the worst stat in football that, that I've ever seen made. Um, giving like they're not pitchers. They're not pitchers on a major league baseball team. They're not goalies. Um, it just doesn't make any sense to me on how a quarterback. There's just too much that goes into football to put a W or an L next to their name. Like, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, a, 
like a pitcher in baseball. He can dominate for seven to even possibly nine innings. Dominate. Dominate hitters. Pitch a two-hitter. Give up zero runs. Strike out nine, ten. And you dominate it. You're the reason probably why they won. Maybe it was a 2 nothing game. That pitcher is a big reason. A goalie. A guy that goes in there, stops 40 shots, gives up no goals or just one, and they win one nothing, 2-1, something like that. That is probably the main reason why you won the hockey game because your goalie stood on his head. Quarterbacks, worst. It's the worst ever because you don't know what. Because the because the win loss records for like Stafford, with he had notoriously some of the worst defenses in the planet here, but he still has that record, that W L, that W column and that L column. More in the L column. Because overall, it was a bad football team. So I just, I, I hate that stat. I, I just, I, 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 I kind of went off there uh, <laughs> on a tangent there. But th- that's just one of the reasons why I hate wins, losses targeted on a quarterback. I think it's the worst thing possible for a quarterback to, uh, to be put upon. I think it's just a terrible, terrible, terrible stat. I just hate it. I just hate it. And uh, <clears throat> But back to Jared Goff. The excuses are over. The excuses are over. One, it, it, it just took one year. It just took one year. They're building around Jared Goff. And I think a lot of people are not going to be satisfied with this team if they win like four or five games. And then there's a possibility they can only win four or five games. Right now, I think they're... Right now, I have... Um, I have them winning six to nine games. I've changed my mind on this probably four or five times. And I'll probably change it another four or five times more. But I got them at the floor six. The floor. So I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt, man. Six? My, they have to at least double their win total from last year. With that schedule, they have to. Fifth easiest schedule on the docket. Fifth easiest schedule. And nothing's easy for the Detroit Lions. Let's get that right, right out of the way. But it's a schedule that's doable. So six to nine. I got them at nine. Was it nine I said? Nine as the ceiling. I don't think they're going to get past nine. Vegas has them at like six and a half, seven. I would probably, I'd be scared to bet that over. I might put a hundy on it though. I might put a hundy, a couple hundred on it. Maybe do some online betting on that and do some Vegas. Um, I can actually do it at my casino in Windsor, to tell you the truth. So, wow. So um, I probably might do. So I might do that at, as well. But I had to get in on, on this debate, man, because it's such it's such an up and down thing with Jared Goff. It's it's nerve wracking. It, it it's a little bit nerve wracking because there's guys that hate him, and I think there's more guys that do hate him. Or fans. I think there's more fans that hate. I'd say it's probably... Uh, it's got to be at least a 70-40. 70-30. 70-30. 60-40. 60-40. I'll say 60-40. I'll say it's more 60-40 that they don't want Jared Goff here. It's true. I just think it's true. You know, 60-40. 55-45. Something like that. But... um I just I wish nothing but success for Jerry. It, it's my team. The Detroit Lions are my team. I don't. I'm not the type of guy that's going to jump ship, bail because I didn't get who I wanted in the draft. That happens a lot. A lot. It happens happens all the time, man. Doesn't mean I'm going to jump ship. I want Jared Goff to be successful. I want him to be one of the reasons why we're winning football games. I really, really do. Even though I'm not. A true golf believer. I'm not a true golf believer, and I'm not a true golf despiser. Like I don't despise him either. Um, at first, I did because I hated the trade because I didn't want Stafford gone. But eventually, I, he grew on me. Um, when he first started playing, he sure as hell didn't. But a um, little bit later on down the road, last month, last month and a half, whatever it was, he played way better football, and I think he deserves a shot here. At least for 2022. I just want to see him play well. Play well, Jared Goff. 
The debate's going to keep going because it's going pretty hard on social media. I see it every day. Um, I want nothing but success because he is a Detroit Lion. I don't even if I even if I despised him as a player or even a even a even a man or a human being, I still wouldn't. I still would want him to do well on my team because it's my team. I'm not, I'm I'm not going to go against my team. So just because I don't like that said player, um, but you can't ignore. That's this is the last thing I'm probably going to say. You can't ignore what he did in the first half and what he did in, in the second half. You can't ignore it. You have to put it together. And it's not even a complete puzzle. You put that together and you're like, I've never seen anything like this. Because he played some of the worst football and then some of the best football. That's how I can describe that. He went from worst to best, just playing-wise. Like he played so bad, he didn't know where he was. And then he played so good at the last five, six games that it was like night and day. And a lot of things changed in order for that to happen. And then the Lions re-upped that in the offseason and made it happen again with the Ben Johnson signing to the OC and the Josh Reynolds re-signing as well too and adding pieces for him to succeed like DJ Chark and Jamison Williams. So everybody's... So get in on golf, guys. Get in on them. You know, you don't have to be true believers, but just kind of have, have a little bit of faith in them. Um... I'm trying my best too with him because, you know, I want him to do so good here. That's the video, guys. It's just a little bit of a rambling about Jared Goff. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on the bottom right. Don't forget the notification bell to get all my videos. And don't forget to like and comment. And uh, we'll talk about the Jared Goff situation. It's going to be it's gonna be touchy all year. Fans are going to be upset. You know, first pick he throws. Uh, you can't really call for anybody. You can't call for Tim Boyle. So if you want, you can. But there's no one else to replace him. So we gotta hope, we got to hope Jared Goff does something here. And we got to hope that the Lions have some type of plan of, of what's going on with Jared Goff in the future of the Detroit Lions. Thanks a lot, guys. One pride. Go Lions.